Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Top 10, and this one is one that I, knew, I didn't even think was possible because, uh, one, it revolves around my board, uh, my, my board games. Well, yes, it does. It does do that because that's all I do. Uh, it involves, it, wow, it revolves around my favorite board game, uh, Talisman. And so since I did a long, long ass unboxing and a long how to play and a long run through, it goes to show that I, sh I might as well just do the top 10 talisman expansions. Uh, so whenever you're watching the unboxing and the how to play and the run through, you can be like, oh, which, which one should I get? Because there are actually 14 talisman expansions that came out. And don't worry, I'm not doing an honorable mention because the uh, four of them... Uh, I mean, if they didn't make this list, then they're not, like, you don't have to go out and get them. Um, but I will, I will talk about them. Uh, one of them is the Deep Realms expansion. All that does is uh, connect the dungeon to the city, which was a cool idea in theory, but it didn't really work out that well. Um, because it, it didn't really matter to make that shortcut. And uh, the other one is the Frost March and the Sacred Pool expansions. Those don't really add a whole lot of theme. Um, the Frost March does add the Ice Queen, and she can be, you know, an alternative ending. And, and they add more characters, so... Uh, but they're small expansions, so I guess if you had the money, they're not expensive at all. Um, and... Uh, what's the other one? Let me... Hold on, let me... Let me... Look. Deep Realms. Um, the Frost March. Sacred Pool. And the Nether Realms expansion, which uh, the Nether Realms and the Deep Realms, both of them were uh, print uh, print on demand, um, which made the <laughs> cards different. <laughs> which, if anyone knows me, I hate that because it's like, oh look, I can see the the difference in the stack. You piece of shit. Um, and that was my computer. Uh, Anyways, and, but that one is literally only an alternative ending, so if you randomly choose, especially because it's hidden, uh, it, makes it, it, it makes it super difficult, uh, one, to play, and two, um, all it does is it make, gives you basically a stack, whoever makes it to the Chronic Command, a stack of really, really hard cards for the players to try and overcome, but if they do, then uh, they'll win, and you lose, because the box, Pandora's box, kills you. But... Those are the four that you don't really have to get. Uh, but the other, these ten, I highly recommend that you that you uh, get because, especially once it gets higher up on the list, because these change the uh, overall game and make it very very fun. Now, I mentioned this, I believe, in the unboxing and the how to play. If you want absolute theme from these expansions, you play them with the base game or um, the new base game. Uh, which is a Cataclysm, which is basically a whole new box. Uh, and you play this with the base game and just the expansion because you'll get the specifically those cards. If you want a huge epic fantasy game, you combine them all and it's magnificent. But if you really want to go down to the theme, you just focus on these. Um, anyway, so without further ado, let's jump in to my favorite game expansions, Talisman. Number 10 is the Firelands expansion. Now, the Firelands expansion um, is a smaller expansion that includes, that includes the Infrit. Infrit? Infrit. 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 Infritus. The, the man and woman. The fire. The fire people. Uh, and uh, the concept of burning cards and terrain cards. Now, uh, basically, um, it's kind of like the um, uh, Tales of Arabian Nights. What's, what's that? The, those those uh, types of people that uh, come into your land, try to conquer it and change it and destroy everything, because that's what they do. And uh, they included Fireland tokens as well. So with the Fireland tokens, basically what it means is now the land's on fire, and if you land there, you lose a life. Um, but the concept of burning cards, whenever it says, oh... Uh, you know, every time you encounter this, burn the top three cards of the adventure deck. And what that means is the top three cards now get removed from the game. Like, permanently. Not, not the discard pile, because the discard pile can be searched through, through, you know, events and, uh, and abilities. But this one, they get destroyed. 
which can really suck. It starts thinning out the deck, leaving, you know, oh man, that's like the best weapon here, and it's gone now. Um, and so those people just suck. And uh, so so that's that's that. And then it also includes terrain cards, which uh, throughout events and stuff, the spaces start getting reformed. There's terrain cards, which you basically draw from, and it's like place a, I don't know, wasteland, you know, terrain card here, which means now what was once the uh, the castle in the uh, middle region is now a wasteland. And so it, it now you can't go to the castle to, you know, uh, get gold for the princess or something, um, or I think visit the doctor, then now it's just a wasteland which does nothing. And this is amazing because thematically what happened one time is the city space on the original board got removed from, uh, because a terrain card got, got on it, and we were playing with the city expansion, so um, thematically I was like, oh, the city's destroyed, you can't go in it, like there's nothing there. And it's like, well, what about the people that uh, were in the city? It's like, well, they can climb out, like, of the rubble, but uh, you can't go in. It's like, well, if they can go out, then we can go in. It's like, okay, well, you can, but there's nothing there. Like, so we climbed out of the rubble. And so uh, it, can make, it can make the game very interesting. And so that's the, the number 10. Actually, uh, on, okay, yeah, there are smaller expansions in here. It's not just, there's not 14 big expansions. Number nine is the Dragon Expansion. Now, this is a, a big box expansion. Actually, funny enough, I believe I got most of these expansions like, bought for me for Christmas or uh, on my birthday. Um, but anyway, so the Dragon Expansion is really cool. Um, but it's one of those expansions that really bogs the game down if you're playing with other expansions. Um, the Dragon Expansion is that there are three different types of dragons vying for control. They're all fighting for the Crown Command to be named Dragon King. Um, and while you're adventuring and stuff, they're still fighting each other for control over the land. And once you make it to the inner region, you actually have to fight the current Dragon King, and that's how you win. So, each dragon has its own Dragon Rage ability, which means that uh, whenever you draw basically a token, it will, uh, it, it will trigger. Um, and with that, uh, how they vie for different control over, e over the land is that they, uh, you, you draw tokens you know, at the beginning of every player's turn, and once one of the dragons has three tokens on its card, you take one of those tokens, place it on your spot, and now that's the Dragon King. Um, so, as you move about, if you land on the space with the token that is the Dragon King, you have to encounter his deck, and each, each dragon has their own deck, which is really, really cool. Um, or, if you land on, you know, maybe one of the other dragons, you can choose to encounter it. And so there's some really good stuff in there, but there's also some really tough stuff, like really hard dragons that you actually have to fight. Um, and so whenever you're going throughout the land, you, you get a lot of theme of the dragons fighting each other, and also the land starts getting more and more difficult as more, as different types of dragons show up. You're like, shit, like we had one time, like, it was like, draw the top four cards of the Dragon King deck, and there was like, and place it on, you know, this spot, you had to roll a die. And it was like four different dragons that you'd have to fight, I think it was like a 40 uh, total, and I was like, well, that place is dead to us, we're never going there, and, um, and God, it just, it, it's so cool, uh, and also with this, it adds a new inner region, so you no longer have to go, um, well, there's two things, you, uh, you no longer have to, you know, encounter the reaper, or, and then the werewolf, and then you no longer have to encounter those, you can just, you now encounter, you know, dragons, like things that make a lot more sense, whenever you uh, are trying to head towards the Chronic Command. That's one, one thing. It basically replicates the inner region, but makes it dragon, like a, about dragons. Then you can flip it, and now it is basically a, t uh, a tower. You're like running up the tower in each space you're going on. You have to draw a certain number of cards from the Dragon King's deck and uh, encounter those. And once you um, get to the middle, then you fight the Dragon King, which I don't know. I just think they're really cool, but the tokens are hard to remember to draw, and it can it can very much bog the game down and be a little bit much if you're playing with all expansions. So, but that's really the only problem. Like I said, if you really want it, want theme, you only play with certain expansions. Number eight is the Harbinger expansion. Probably out of all of these, the one I've I've 
I guess Nether Realms, but it's not even on the list, is uh, one I've actually never done. And then um, the Harbinger expansion is one that I've actually rarely done um, because uh, I usually only ever play with all expansions. So uh, what the Harbinger brings is it brings omens. Uh, well, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Seth from, you know, the Harbinger. Uh, but it brings like maybe four different types of omens and a stack of Harbinger cards, which are literally all bad. Like, I thought that, okay, well, no, of course there's some bad and some good. No, they're all bad, and they're all super hard. This, this expansion is, is, is a small expansion, and it also includes the Harbinger. Um, but, man, those cards suck, and they really make the game difficult. So what happens is, over time, you will have a stack of, I believe, seven cards from the uh, omen you choose, and there's like four that you can choose from. And uh, so what you do is, over the game, you will be drawing down from these, uh, these seven cards in, in the uh, omen deck, and each one progressively, you know, lays out the end of the world, and so it makes the game more and more difficult. And if you, if that deck ever runs out, the, the end of the world happened and you lose the game. I believe you have to, uh, you have to make it to like the Chronic Command or something um, before all before the, all that happens. I actually don't remember because I've only done this expansion once. But um, even beside the point, I still think it's better than the Dragon and Firelands expansion because of um, one theme. I believe the end of the world, bringing about the end of the world, is really cool. And the Harbinger figure uh, that. Um, you encounter just like you would encounter the werewolf or the reaper is uh, really really cool because just like the rest of them uh, if you roll high on his chart good things happen but he also starts you know making you draw from the omen deck and also it starts discarding uh, the end of the world so uh, with that it comes with you know oh well okay now this game turned from a you know a three hour game to an hour and a half because of how quickly these cards can get discarded. I mean, now you're like, okay, well, we need to save the world instead of, you know, let it fall into ruin based on this Harbinger guy. And the Omen cards are super cool, even though they suck. Like, they're super, super hard. Uh, but that is my number eight, the Harbinger expansion. Number seven, this is the first corner piece. Yay! Highlands! The Highlands expansion, which is um, probably out of all four, uh, of the corners, the one that's kind of most blah, um, one to look at and two to actually go into, um, but it's, um, it can be, <laughs> one, it can be funny, and uh, two, um, each corner piece seems to have kind of like their own thing about them, and so what the Highlands, I believe, is, is you kind of go in there, and um, that's where you get like a whole bunch of gems and stuff that you can go take to the Alchemist to sell to gain a lot of gold, um, and so while you're going through the highland, uh, which is, you know, a bunch of mountains and crags and uh, there's a lost city and uh, there's ice and stuff that you're going through, you're basically adventuring through this land up to climb the mountain to actually altern alternatively fight the Eagle King, which is the last space on the board. And whenever you go there, if you fight him and beat him, um, which is not, he's not that hard, you get a relic. Uh, and one of the four relics. One is him, uh, he's basically, uh, he's not a follower, but he is able to help you out. And then you can also get his, um, you know, his eagle that he rides, that's, I believe that's a follower. And then basically his scepter and his amulet. And there's only four of those, so if you're playing with more than four people, not everyone can get there and get one. And they are, they are beneficial, because the Highlands is relatively easy to go through. Um, but don't get me wrong, there's still difficult stuff in there. And there's also really, really good items in there. But to look at it, it's very brown and it's very just, alright, that's it. But with it being a um, corner piece, it, it was one of those things that it was the, f it wasn't, what was the first, no, it wasn't the first expansion I got. Um, but it was still one of those that it's still a corner piece, so it added more to go into. And a lot of people enjoy it, like a lot of people like going into the highlands and um, exploring that type of terrain. Because um, there's a lot of elemental stuff in there and a lot of creatures that fly. Um, a lot of things that mess with the main thing, because a lot of times you take 
cards from that deck and stack them on top of the uh, adventure deck, which is really, really cool because I always like the fact that, oh, well, I want to encounter stuff, but I really don't want to go in there. Well, okay, through the Highlands, some event cards allow you to um, deal with stuff like that. And you can go in there and, and heal up, and uh, it's just, it's, it's really fun, but also um, probably the weaker of the four corner pieces. So um, I, I think I've played it way more than the, than the other three above it, so that's why I, um, that's why it's at, at number seven. Number six is, um, I'm trying to think of what my first, no, I, okay, I remember what my first expansion was. I'm trying to think of the order I bought these, but anyway, my number six is the Blood Moon expansion. This one is basically, uh, like a Halloween-themed horror-esque, uh, um, expansion so if you really want to play this game around Halloween you include this expansion and only this expansion with the base game and you definitely will. Um, the biggest thing that this expansion brings is the werewolf. Now this was yes yeah, so this was what, uh, the first one that I got that included a uh, basically kind of like an NPC and what the werewolf does is he basically hunts the players around the board and um, and you, if he if he encounters you, then you have to roll on his chart, and you can become a lycanthrope, which means that a lot of the cards from this expansion affect affect you. Uh, that doesn't mean as much if you're playing with all expansions, because you're almost never going to draw those cards that do. But for example, if you're a lycanthrope and you happen to draw the uh, peasant mob, you're you're they kill you. Like you're out, you're not out of the game. You're just your character dies, and you get a whole new one. And I think that's really, really cool because, I, I don't know, it was one of the first that I'm just like, oh, wow. And it was kind of like more instead of me having to chase you down if I wanted something, I could have him go after you as well and screw you over. Um, but then it can also come back to bite you in the ass if you do that. And so with the Blood Moon, it included the Werewolf. That was the biggest thing. And then it also included a day-night cycle, which... If it was day, weakens all creatures, and if it's night, it strengthens all creatures, and only by one. But, you know, still, that in, in a game where the combat really isn't the center focus, where you really just roll a die for combat, winning by one or losing by one is, is a big deal. And, uh, and so with, with that, it makes the game a little bit more interesting while the werewolf is also hunting you down. So I, I always thought that was really cool. Um, the only problem with the werewolf and stuff is if no one really wants, you know, to deal with him, whenever you roll to move, uh, and you roll a one, that's how you control him. So then you roll, if you roll a six, you can just move him out of the way. Like a lot of people, especially with the, all the expansions, they can just throw him into a, a expansion where he'll be out of the way the entire time. So, but if you only play with the base game and that expansion, then there's nowhere for you to go nowhere to put him and he can still hunt you down. So that is number six, Blood Moon. My number five is the only expansion that I have gone through the entire deck uh, of cards, and that would be the City Expansion. Now, uh, the City Expansion was uh, definitely one that was completely different than the rest of them, um, because you, it, it obviously is the city, um, and it added so much more than just going to that city space in the corner and being like, all right, I'm going to go to one of those three. No, you actually go into and do a bunch of shopping. And because uh, it's not a three tier kind of thing, it's two. You basically go around all these streets, but there's shops that along all these streets that basically if you have gold, you can definitely boost yourself up a whole hell of a lot. If you are more of a, you know, craft user, so you have a lot of spells and stuff, You there's a shop for that. If you use weapons, there's a shop for that. If you like followers, there's a shop for that. And not only are there all these shops to buy stuff, there's actually shops you can visit, like the high priest, uh, the high the high temple, or the, the basically a priest place that you can go to and get a whole bunch of benefits based on how much you know you offer. Um, so, surprise, surprise. The, uh, the church is asking for money. And, uh, so there's that, which can benefit you, and then there are 
um, ways you can change your alignment, then there are ways you can, you know, teleport, you can go on the wharf that allows you to go to the middle. Um, and so with the city expansion, uh, it was just so completely different. My friend and I, we just kept going through all the streets and all the shops, and we actually went through the entire deck. And there's all these guilds that you uh, encounter, and especially this came with a lot of, you know, uh, thematic alternative endings. Uh, basically like the um, Thieves Guild, which you just need to have a bunch of objects. You just had to, you know, either rob people and take them or just collect a whole bunch. There was the Assassin's Guild, which the city also came with um, wanted posters, which was a way you can get gold. You basically get a wanted poster and then kill something on that wanted poster and take it back and then you um, and then you uh, turn it in and get gold for that. So there was, and there's with the Assassin's Guild alternative ending, you collected those wanted posters. And so, like, it, it's, it's really beneficial if you uh, have gold, but if you don't have gold, you could still get gold in inside the city. And I really liked some of the uh, characters that actually came with each, uh, with this expansion, especially with, with all the expansions, because there's so, so many different playable characters. Not as many as, you know, like Cosmic Encounter or something, but for for Talisman? Like, I think 69? It was some weird number that was like, why isn't it 70? Or something like that. Uh, but the city is super fun, super funny um, to go through, and definitely a place that you want to go to early on uh, if you can get gold, because then that'll definitely push, uh, push you above the rest. So that is number five the city expansion. Number four is one that I believe is a little bit better than Blood Moon and that is the Reaper expansion. So uh, what the Reaper does thematically it's basically the Grim Reaper that was originally in the inner region um, where all you do is you know have to play dice with him and, and roll higher. He has now left and he's hunting everyone down and uh, with the cards and stuff that get added to to this uh, to this game from him are way more interesting than a lot of the other ones and the reason why I say that is because when you encounter the werewolf for example the worst thing that can technically happen but it's also a benefit is being a lycanthrope you get bonuses at night by being a lycanthrope I mean that's if you roll a one and then you can fight the werewolf and he's relatively tough early on uh, and he just becomes late late game he becomes a pain with the Reaper, he is always a constant threat. Now, the difference between the two is it, during the daytime, the werewolf has to land on your space. Like if you're four spaces away, he has to roll a four and go there. If it's nighttime, um, he just has to encounter you. So if you're four spaces away and he rolls a six and he hits you, you encounter him. The Reaper is not the same. The Reaper, he has to land on your space each, each time. But, the consequences of encountering the Reaper are much, much higher, meaning that if you encounter the Reaper and you roll a 1, he kills you. I think it's called, it's time, which means he kills you. So you could be super high level, you know, a bunch of best items. You'd like, if you were to fight anything, you'd be like, ah, oh, guys, I don't need to roll, I win. My, my strength is 30. So, uh, which doesn't always mean you're going to win. But they can have the Reaper go after you, and if you roll a 1, you, you just die. And uh, with that extra tension to the game, also, I would include this one with the, the Werewolf, because now you have two creatures hunting you down. And um, like with the Werewolf, the Blood Moon expansion, you have to kind of place one in a confined area, because if you don't, and people just like screw that and put them like way down in the highlands and it's like oh all right he's never coming out and i've had them get stuck and it sucks uh like that but if you play with just the base game you are in for a difficult time uh because of how much they can hunt you down so i always thought the reaper added more threat and just more tension to the game so that's why it's at number four number three is the new base game it is the Cataclysm expansion. Now, um, all of these expansions in the rule books actually have like a little story to them of what they bring and what and what they are in this world, uh, which helps a lot. With the Cataclysm expansion, what it added was a new board. 
like the base game board that if you uh, in if you watch the unboxing is so bland now this one um, basically is that okay the harbinger thing happened it's now the end of the world so a lot of the spaces are now completely different uh, the crown and command spot is no longer on fire and lava it's for it's frozen over um, and so while you're running throughout these uh, you know the new land uh, you are encountering you know they're called denizens like what once was the tavern where you knew who you were meeting you draw from a denizen deck so you're encountering different people each time um, and if you draw you know the one that's supposed to be at the tavern for example they'll stay there but you could draw you know the doctor in a space and be like okay well thank god I met a doctor and then he'll go back into the deck and hopefully gets drawn somewhere where he'll stay so not only that it's incredibly thematic with with uh, the fact that it is the end of the world and some of the um, you know uh, creatures that or characters you can play as like one of them is a mutant that got incredibly mutated from the uh, from from the end of the world it's basically like radiation it just totally screwed them over um, it just brought a whole new element to the game um, because I would never go back and play with the base game board ever again. Um, I would stick with the Cataclysm uh, expansion. So it's basically it's not a standalone expansion because not enough cards come to actually use it. But uh, what you do is you play this and you incorporate it with the base game, ex uh, you know, base game cards. And then um, if you really want a dark like Halloween game, you do that one. Blood Moon and Reaper. And the best thing about these is you can mix and match to give you whatever type of theme that you actually want. So, the Cataclysm is the end of the world, or you do Cataclysm and the Harbinger um, to just make it an, an, even more difficult. Cataclysm is a really, really good expansion. That was the last expansion that they've actually done, and I believe ever will do because of the fact that Games Workshop and the uh, Final, or Final Fantasy. Uh, Fantasy Flight Games have now uh, broke up, so which is a real shame because I uh, I uh, could always use more expansions because I'm sick. But anyway, that is the Cataclysm expansion. Number two is this was the first expansion I believe that I ever got, and it's been a while. This was Talisman was of course the first board game I ever played that got me into this hobby. Um, so now. Uh, or not really hobby anymore, it's more lifestyle. Things have changed. Uh, so that's, uh, number two is the dungeon expansion. Um, almost number one, but not quite. Uh, so with the dungeon expansion, it basically, that's the hardest corner piece to actually go into. Even at higher levels, there's just so much, so many twists and turns that totally screw you over. Hard and difficult enemies to fight. Some enemies that just take away items that you have, that if you have a really good item, you're like, oh my god, it's that one. Creatures that you just can't kill with regular weapons. Um, you have to use like magic weapons or something like that. And not only that, but at the very end, you you fight the Lord of Darkness. And he is, he's tough. Uh, I believe strength and craft of 12. And so whenever you fight him, if you beat him, he, he basically it's the treasure room, and that's where he's at. And there's a stack of treasure cards you get to look through and pick one. Um, so And there's a whole bunch of really cool items in there that are super beneficial. So if you can make it to him and beat him, then, I mean, I would do so because then you'll get those cool items. But the best part about the dungeon expansion is that the, uh, you don't have to make it all the way back. In the Highland expansion, if you... Beat the Eagle King, you go back to the Crags, which is basically the beginning of where the Highlands is. If um, you, I mean, you don't teleport anywhere through the city, you just go around the streets and go out. With the dungeon expansion, if you beat him, the difference between your guys' strength teleports you to a certain area. Um, and if you beat him by, what was it, 12? 12 or more? 8 or more? Yeah, I believe if you beat him by eight or more, you actually get teleport straight to the Crown of Command. Something less than that, you teleport to the Plane of Peril or something. So, not only does it bring a new way to actually win, you no longer have to go through the Portal of Power and then um, make it through the inner region to get to the Crown of Command. You can make try and make it through the dungeon 
which is difficult in and of itself to do, and beat him by more than eight, and if you do that, then you teleport straight to the Chronic Man. And it does two things. One, it makes it very interesting if people are trying to race and go different ways. Um, it, it brings that. And two, is it brings... Uh, it can make the game shorter because... Uh, you no longer have to go one space at a time to the Crown of Command and make it through the outer to the middle to the inner. If you make it through the dungeon expansion then and beat him by more than eight, then you jump straight there and you start doing the alternative ending or the main game crown, uh, command spell. It's so cool and it's always a running joke between all of us to be like, alright, yeah, hey, anyone, uh, you guys should go into the dungeon. It's super fun and then you, you'll most likely die. Um, and I remember one time we were playing and one of the uh, guys, for some weird reason, we got to teleport him to uh, like anywhere on the board or anywhere in the game. And what we did is we all collectively decided to put him basically smack dab in the middle of the dungeon because uh, he had the best character. Like he started with the best character and so <laughs> he ended up dying because even though he had the best character, I mean, you're still super weak, and you're going to get your ass kicked in the dungeon, so he ended up dying. Ah, so funny. So funny. So that's my number two, the dungeon expansion. And now, my number one, if any of you, you know, remember the four I mentioned earlier, and, uh, you know, have know anything about, you know, Talisman, you'll know my number one. Uh, but no, the number one is the Woodlands expansion. One of the newest, I think, yes, that was the last fourth corner piece expansion, and I gotta say, one, this that board is very pretty to look at, it's very lush and green, and that is like, that has a lot to do with fey and kind of mystical things, which I, it makes the game super weird, and also gave something of an element to uh, a base game item, which, or not item, a base game accessory, which was the fate tokens. Now, the fate tokens, okay, who cares? Uh, which side you have, dark or light, all this, they all do the same thing. Now, they don't, because either if you have dark fate, you can use them to make someone else re-roll. If you have light fate, you can re-roll. And so you can kind of role-play a little bit with that. If you're like, oh, my character's good, so I'll only have light fate. Neutral, you can mix and match. So it does that. Then, while you're in the woodlands, it does so much, actually. If you go into the woodlands, you get a, you choose a path, which benefits or hurts you, while you're going through the uh, uh, through the woodlands, obviously if you leave, you don't have a path anymore. But if you make it all the way to the end, then you will actually get a destiny card, which permanently increases uh, your abilities throughout the game. And so you can keep going through these paths and getting them. This one is difficult and very very weird. It is hard to actually make it to the end because of the of of fey. Fey's are basically tricksters, and they like to screw with people. So. Um, there's just a lot of stuff, like, if you're going in there and it's like, oh, yeah, okay, if you're, um, um, a, uh, if, if you're whatever, a certain type of alignment, if you're good, um, then continue. If you're evil, then you're, you start at the beginning, or you have to leave the, the, the forest or something, or the, uh, woodlands. So, you just get screwed with a lot, and, uh, it did a lot more than just with the fate by making them light or dark. There are a bunch of creatures and events that affect you if you're light bound, which means you have more light, fate, or dark bound if you're dark. And even some if you are unbound, which is you have an equal number of both, or fateless, which means you have no fate. So there's a lot of cards that affect you based on that. And that's, that truly brings an interesting element to this game. And the things that you encounter are super thematic. Each, each expansion with the cards are thematic, which is amazing. And so with the Woodlands, you just go in there and you don't know what's going to happen. Like with the Highlands, you can kind of expect dungeon, you expect city, obviously it's very obvious. Uh, but with the Woodlands, you you just have no clue. And the path that you choose um, can, can, you know, make it even more difficult or it can make it a little bit easier. Uh, and then, but those destinies definitely are worth it. The cool items that you get in there are definitely worth it. I... It, it's it's hard to say I wouldn't ever play with the Woodlands expansion because it's just so fun. And the creatures, not the creature, I always say that. The characters that you get from the Woodland expansion are super awesome as well. It's just, it's so fun. Now, I love all these expansions, obviously some more than others, but I, I think the Woodlands is is my favorite at the moment. Um, I, I 
pretty much always go into the woodlands because, I mean, you never know. You just never know. It brings, that, it brings even more randomness to a game that's already incredibly random. Um, but that's it, everyone. That is my top 10 Talisman expansions. The 10 games that I believe that if you're going to buy any expansion, you should buy these 10. The other four, that's up to you. But then again, that's just my top 10. If you, you know, liked what, what you heard from the other ones more than the rest, then by all means, um, that's, that's your decision. And just as long as you love Talisman as much as I do. Um, so that, that was a top 10. If you want to see any more top 10s, let me know in the comments below. I've, I've done a few um, uh, suggestions from people already. And uh, so don't hesitate to let me know what you'd like to see. But other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you want to help out the channel, I have my Patreon link right there. If you want to make some suggestions on board games you'd like to see us run through, I have my board game geek list right there. And if you want to just, you know, like the Facebook page, I have my Facebook link right there. And have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.